What's up everybody, Dread back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Six Days in Felucia because they just released an announcement. But before we get into that, be sure to like up the video so that more people can see it. Subscribe if you're new and ding that bell so that you can get more content on games like this or any other game that I decide to cover. So quick history lesson, Six Days in Felucia was a game that was supposed to launch back in eh, a little over 10 years ago. It was to depict the second battle of Felucia in late 2004, I believe. They recreated the city and they wanted to make like a bunch of plans of going into Felucia and how they were going to go about it, but that never saw the light of day because the game itself sparked controversy for a number of reasons, like video games not exactly being liked in those times, or the fact that the Battle of Felucia in real life was a disaster, or that the game seemed to paint the Americans as good guys in this scenario, and there was nothing wrong with us going into this country and doing the things that we did. At least that was according to activists that said that the CIA at the time was heading up production of this game to try and tell the American people that it was good for us to go into this country. So yeah, definitely controversial and honestly nobody thought that this game would actually see the light of day in my personal opinion I don't really have a problem with the game being made I mean we already have Felucia maps depicted in other games and have games that have depicted real-world battles already So that's not really an issue But what I do have a bit of a problem with is how they're going to describe what happened Like is it actually going to say that America committed atrocities or is it just going to skim over those facts? Honestly, if this game actually does that I will give it fucking props It has big balls if it fucking does that but I don't know if it's actually gonna do that we'll definitely have to see when we get our hands on it i mean from the looks of it it just seems like it's gonna stick to the perspective of the soldiers who fought in the battle and i mean from their perspective they're thinking that they're probably doing what's best for the country doing what they're told and not really questioning why they're in felucia but anyways nobody actually thought that this game would see the light of day until 2021 rolled around around february when they announced that six days in felucia was actually going to come out that year obviously that didn't happen but there was definitely a bunch of noticeable changes one being that it was not going to be in third person anymore more and two being that it was actually going to hover around the soldiers in the battle instead of the whole battle itself those are just some noticeable changes but there were definitely more they announced that it was going to drop sometime in 2021 but my biggest issue that i had with it at the time was that they weren't really showing off a whole lot of gameplay which had me really concerned because how are you going to announce it not show any gameplay and say that it's going to come out in the same year and obviously when it came time to actually you know drop the game they ended up delaying it so that's kind of my biggest problem with this game there is a severe lack of actual gameplay and any gameplay that they've shown seems heavily scripted to me now i'm not saying that i'm not excited for this game but i am saying that it does raise a few red flags now hopefully this is an actual game and all my fears are for naught okay history lesson and thoughts over let's get into the update so the name of this update is called sit rep gear authenticity you're running with 100 pounds of gear on your back at full speed in a sprint while you're taking machine gun fire and the whole time you're looking straight ahead but you're also looking down to make sure you're feet are still moving below you. Lance Corporal, James Maxey. Interesting. This was a post that was made on February 11th, so I'm obviously a little late on that, but you know me, always late and out of date. It starts off with saying, Authenticity stands at the core of the experience we're building in Six Days in Fallujah. More than 100 Marines, soldiers, and Iraqi civilians who were present during the Second Battle of Fallujah entrusted their stories to us so we could have the opportunity to share them with the rest of the world. It's an opportunity we intend to get right, and so it's become our responsibility to develop a game that's both rooted in realism and unlike anything that's come before. Of course, developing the most authentic military shooter to date requires countless amounts of reference material. For Six Days of Felucia, we've gathered thousands of photographs and thousands of videos to accurately portray the people, places, and objects from this period of history. Alongside our growing archive of media, we actively collaborate with consultants for verification checks. These consultants live around the world, from California to Cairo, Boston to Baghdad. With reference photos and videos in our pocket and consultants on deck. We also purchased surplus military gear and clothing for the Middle East to use as tangible reference material for our artists. We archive more accurate results with these references in hand almost every single time. As a result, our gear is as close to real world material as technology allows us to be. Please remember that all assets shown are currently a work in progress. Let's start with the helmets. In 2004, there were at least three different helmets being fielded by the USMC. The Cold War era Paz GT, the newer and improved USMC lightweight helmet, and the even more streamlined advanced combat helmet. What's more, special operation units were fielding newer Mitch helmets during this period as well. I have no idea if I'm saying these helmets names correctly. As you can imagine, all this variation caused for some confusion. We took a look at the community feedback and sought after additional helmet models at the studio. From there, a complete remodel of marine headgear was underway. And here they have a picture of the helmet. And honestly, my personal opinion, I think I've actually seen better versions of it. I mean, I'm not trying to like knock these guys, but after saying like, 
like gear from World War 3. I think my expectations are just a little higher, but you know, I'm not really here for the game's looks. I'm here for the experience, you know, the experience of clearing houses one by one, not knowing what to expect, that kind of experience. But it's a nice looking helmet. Don't really have too much to say about it. So let's push on. The model and remodel process pose a few challenges. First, every piece of art is interconnected in a long chain. Any tweaks or adjustments made have a good chance of affecting other pieces in this puzzle. Assets are continuously passed back and forth between character artists, animators, and technical artists to meet authenticity goals both outside and inside of the game engine. There have been cases in which equipment models were identical to our reference material until they were imported into Unreal. It's a very dynamic process, and we want to commend our entire art team for the long hours dedicated to getting the details right. Now, our player base can rest assured knowing our base marine character wears a USMC LWH with a more accurate upward curve at the back. Next up are our flak jackets or plate carriers. As it turns out, one of our reference was a bit too new. The USMC had made some subtle changes between the time of the battle when we took our photos of marines at Camp Pendleton shortly after. Oh, Camp Pendleton is actually not that far from here. Upon realizing we needed to go back in time to get closer to the real thing, we acquired the correct interceptor body armor vest. From there, our artists went back to work in a similar fashion to our helmet rework. Now, our flat jackets are more authentic with fewer mobile webbing rows. And they got a picture of it right here. That well, looks kind of simplistic to me, if I'm being honest. I'm not even sure where you're supposed to put the plate carrier. Or is this whole thing just the armor? But anyways, moving on to the next thing here. Let's talk about the variety of pouches featured in six days. We have received some community feedback on coloring after digging into more reference material, some of which was provided by the community. We found different levels of color variation. In some cases, magazine pouches were colored coyote tan. In others, they were woodland instead of a one-size-fits-all solution to the coloring. We're now including multiple variations to paint a more accurate picture as a whole. Here they have a developer comment. Part of our design pipeline uses recolors on our models. We identified an issue in which colors tended to wash out and we lose details from the base texture that was not making its way to the end with the recolor. Now, our new recolor tech is immensely more accurate in terms of color chroma to the actual colors used in the factory camouflage pattern and fabric. Taking things one step further, we even aged them slightly as marines were not typically wearing anything that was 100% fresh off the military quartermaster. And then we got like a full picture of the uniform underneath this right here. That guy's face kind of reminds me of freaking Quentin Tarantino, if anybody knows who that is. Moving on, on the topic of hydration pouches, we appreciate the conversation regarding the standard issue versus the camelback. However, we decided to go with something similar to the camelback for a few reasons. While marines were given the standard issue hydration carriers and canteens, most found themselves wanting more to work with. They often brought their own camelbacks alongside personal goggles and sunglasses into the field. Some marines we spoke with even preferred the camelback to the standard issue. In fact, camelback products says its sales figures over the last decade indicate that 80% of military personnel in the Gulf have the backpacks. And they have a source page here. Interesting. Oh, fucking New York Times, of course. God damn it. Are camelbacks a Middle Eastern company? It would honestly make sense to me because camel get it camel back no okay i definitely like one for myself but anyways we received some feedback on the shaping of the dump pouches and we want to provide more context on our design decisions we intentionally designed these to be open top for animation purposes as emptied mags will fall towards the dump pouch to be discarded oh that's what it's for the big pouch on the side right there to dump mags but isn't it like supposed to be on the back side though i mean i guess you could put it like wherever but i thought that the best place was the back side but they have it on the side here it's whatever though underneath this is another picture of a close-up of the previous guy that we just saw the guy that i said that kind of looks like quentin tarantino you know i've got to say that i feel like i've seen more realistic faces in other games um but I, again i'm not really here for like i mean like the model itself looks good like passable you know it's not like a freaking old ps2 game or something like that again i'm not really here for the looks i'm here for the experience but uh yeah moving on to the next thing here there has also been community interest in equipment durability and we want to take this opportunity to tease our progress our artists have the ability to control the dirt intensity on faces and equipment as players complete operations. This dirtiness is tailored to support our very specific pieces of gear as players will even find dirt along folds, crevices, and straps. There is more work to be done on this feature but we hope this drives authenticity even farther for our players. Authenticity in every aspect including gear and equipment. This is fundamental to the entire team working on Six Days in Felucia. We are committed to getting details right as well as stories of those who were there in 2004. Another big thank you goes 
Forza to our community for sharing the feedback necessary to help make these visual changes to gear happen as we continue development. We welcome this feedback as we work to improve our game every step of the way. So again, this was a pretty good read, but you know, it's not like they showed off a whole lot of gameplay. I kind of wish that there was maybe like gifts in here or something. The reason why this kind of like worries me is because I've actually looked at the studios that are behind this game and they haven't really worked on too much. So it does have me just a bit worried. I mean, like the only studio that's actually done something it looks like is uh, Highwire. They created a game called Golem and according to Metacritic, that game is pretty average it looks like so i'm actually kind of curious to know how this game is gonna turn out hopefully it's one of the better ones to come out in 2022 if it comes out in 2022 because we still don't actually have a date as far as i can tell so i mean i'm excited for this game but i'm very skeptical about it because there's not a whole lot of gameplay that's being shown off here there's just like a lot of scripted stuff and any gameplay that was shown felt very heavily scripted but hopefully my worries are for not and we're gonna have a great game here if it's anything like how they describe it then we might actually get a game that's kind of close to a brothers in arms type of game where you can like order people around and do flanks and all that stuff that'd be freaking awesome but i guess we're gonna have to see what it looks like whenever it decides to come out whenever they actually decide to show off raw gameplay that'd be great so uh yeah that's all i really got to say about this game what are your guys' thoughts tell me in the comments below because i'm gonna end it here if you enjoyed the fact that i cover games like six days of Felucia, then be sure to like the video share the video comment down below if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon or hop on the drum button that's underneath the video if you're someone that's new to this channel be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on games like these or any other games that i decide to cover with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye Bye.